Ultimate Redeemer. He was the one that was responsible to take care, one of the ones responsible to take care of his family. Now, I want you to notice this. Uh, number three on your outline. As we try to follow God, he pours out his grace. The third thing that I get from this story is, as we try to follow God, he continues to pour out his grace. How many of you have ever played matchmaker before? Raise your hand. You tried to set a friend up with somebody? Anybody? Okay, there's a few of you in here. Thank you. Thank you for your honesty. <laughs> Those are the people, single people you want to see afterwards. Hopefully you saw their hands raised up. One day, Naomi took it upon herself to play matchmaker in her family. And, and she tells Ruth, I want you to go take a bath, get dressed up, Put on something nice. Put on some perfume. Because I'm going to try to, to do something here. I'm going to try and set you up with Boaz. Right? This kinsman redeemer. And she tells her to, to, go after, to go after him. Now, after the long day, after dinner, after he had been drinking wine, he goes and he falls asleep, the Bible tells us. And then Naomi says to her this, and it's kind of kind of sudden. It's going to sound kind of provocative. She tells Ruth, I want you to go to where he is sleeping. Notice where he goes to sleep. And when he's asleep, I want you to go into his room. Don't let him hear you. Don't let anybody see. Go into his room, uncover his feet, and lay there at his feet. And then she says something pretty strange. She says, he will tell you what to do. Kind of risque, right? What's going on, Naomi? What are you asking Ruth to do? Right? It, it kind of leads to all this thing going on in your mind, right? Uh, is it, she trying to seduce him? Is that what's going on in, in this thing? Um, I want you to notice the response when Boaz realizes that, that he's, she's laying there. Notice on your Bible, on your outline, Ruth 3 8. It says, In the middle of the night, Something startled the man. And he turned and he discovered a woman lying at his feet. Who are you, he asked. I am your servant, Ruth, she said. Spread the corner of your garment over me, since you are a kinsman redeemer. Basically, she was asking for him to, to provide for her. To, to take responsibility of being that kinsman redeemer in her life. For, for both her and Naomi. And no, notice what, what happens next. The Lord bless you, my daughter, he replied. This kindness is greater than that which you showed earlier. You have not run after younger men, whether rich or poor. And now, my daughter, don't be afraid. I will do for you all you ask. Now get this picture. She's there. She's laying at his feet. And, and apparently he was an older guy. And he says, you didn't go after somebody younger. You didn't go for somebody who was richer than me. You showed this kindness to me. And he says, I'm going to do everything that you ask. Now, notice this. All my fellow townsmen know that you were a woman of noble character. Although it is true that I am near of kin, there is a kinsman redeemer nearer than I. There is somebody else who has first responsibility to take that role in your life. I know you just asked me to take that role, but there's somebody who's first in line in our family to do that. And then he says, stay here for the night. In the morning, if he wants to redeem, good, let him redeem. But if he is not willing, as surely as the Lord lives, I will do it. Lie here until morning. Just stay here. Um, during the time of the judges, there was a lot of things going on. The people were acting in any old fashion they would, and... Uh, some commentators take this to mean because he told her to stay here, it was an act of uh, protection. He didn't want her walking home in the middle of the night where something could happen to her. The Bible says that she woke up early in the morning before everybody else did, and she goes home. He gives her some food to take on her way home, and she goes back home. And then the next morning, he's going to, to see about whether or not this first kinsman redeemer is going to take that role. I want you to notice number four on your outline. The fourth thing that you and I have learned from Ruth and, and just apply to our lives is this. When we trust God, we will see Him turn bad into good. 
when we trust God, um, when we seek to follow Him, Romans 8.28 says that all things work for the good, for those who love God and who are called according to His purpose. Uh, when we trust God, when we're trying to follow Him, even when this horrible stuff happens in our lives, uh, we can see God turn something bad even into something good. The next day the Bible tells us that that uh, Boaz gets up early and he goes to the elders of the people and, and, he, and he's trying to make a deal. He's trying to see whether or not the first kinsman redeemer will take that role of responsibility for Naomi and, and for Ruth. Now, he, he does it in a kind of uh, a tricky way, I think, as you read it. It's kind of, kind of funny how he, he brings this to this guy. He goes to his cousin or his relative, this other kinsman redeemer, and he says, look, uh, a little leg... Uh, he has died, and it's your responsibility as the number one redeemer in our family to make sure that you pay for this land, that you buy it back so that uh, it stays in the family. And he says, do you want to do this? And, and the first redeemer says, yeah, I want to do that. I'll buy the land. And then he says, oh, wait a second. I forgot to tell you that when you do that, you have to marry uh, marry this relative named Ruth. And you have to take care of her mother-in-law, Naomi. And the, and the Redeemer says something along the lines of, Look, I, I don't want a, that much responsibility. I was willing to buy the land, but I don't really want to divide my inheritance between this woman, Ruth. If we have kids, I'm going to have to divide my inheritance. And so basically he says, no, I don't want to do it. But if you want to do it, you go ahead, Boaz. And you, take, you take that responsibility in our family. And so notice what it says under Scripture. Then Boaz uh, announced to the elders and all the people, Today you are my witnesses that I have, I have bought from Naomi all the property of Elimelech, Kilian, and Malon. I have also acquired Ruth the Moabitess. Malon's widow as my wife, in order to maintain the name of the dead with his property, so that his name will not disappear from among his family or from the town records. Today, you are my witnesses. So he goes ahead and he, he does that in, in a legal manner. He says, today I'm going to do that. She is going to be my wife. Now notice this in the next passage. It says, so Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. And then he went to her, and the Lord enabled her to conceive. And she gave birth to a son. And the woman said to Naomi, Praise be to the Lord who, has, to who this day has not left you without a kinsman redeemer. May he become famous throughout Israel. He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you and who is better to you than seven sons has given him birth. Now, notice the response. Uh, the Lord has blessed you, Naomi. You, you once said that you were bitter because of all this, but God has sent a kinsman redeemer to take care of you and your family in your old age. Notice this. And then Naomi, now picture this in your mind. Naomi took the child and laid her on her lap and cared for him. And the woman living there said, Naomi has a son. And they named him Obed, and he, he was the father of Jesse, the father of David. And, and like I said, David would later become famous. Uh, he would become the king of all Israel. David, the story of David is an amazing story. But notice this story, guys, that even though things don't always work out the way that we plan, that God is always there, always willing to redeem us. You know, I was thinking about this. And I uh, was talking to some of the teenagers this last week. And sometimes we slip away from God. Isn't that true? We fall away from Him. There's, some, there's things that happen in our life that cause us maybe to become upset. And maybe sometimes we take it out on God. And yet the Bible says that God is always the one who is willing to bring us back. In Revelation, it talks about how we are to remember the height to which we had fallen. You know, we 